Okay, we're going to take a look at the skin smoothing group in a little bit more detail. And at the top of the group are some parameters that have to do with the actual skin smoothing algorithm. But before we get to that, I want to take a look at this coverage parameter and these boundary related parameters and the mask controls. You can see that if I enable this mask controls checkbox, what it does is expose a set of previously hidden parameters for adjusting the mask. The default settings for the skin smoothing mask will work well in a large majority of cases and you may not need to adjust these mask controls often. So why would you need to adjust them? Here are some examples. For a person with facial hair and you wish to exclude those areas from the skin smoothing, you can set coverage to upper face. For a person with a haircut that covers the forehead and you wish to exclude that area from the skin smoothing, you can reduce the vertical stretch of the boundary. You could do the same thing for a person wearing some kind of a hat where the forehead is somewhat obscured. And there are various other reasons you may wish to adjust the size and shape of the protected areas within the skin smoothing mask. And so there are controls for doing that. And once the mask is adjusted, by deselecting the mask controls checkbox, you can hide those parameters to avoid unnecessary clutter in the fresh face parameter display. So after looking a bit at the skin smoothing mask, let's take a quick look at some of the actual skin smoothing parameters that control how the skin is smoothed within the mask areas. This image has a fresh face effect applied using default values. And by toggling the effect of the skin smoothing on and off, you can see how it's affecting this image. The image has some dramatic shadows of the hair cast onto the face. And I feel like the default skin smoothing values take away too much of those shadows. And if I focus on the nose area, it looks like some of the definition provided by the lighting, specifically some of the apparent depth of the image is getting flattened out with the default smoothing values. So let's adjust it to improve the look. And the first thing I'm going to do is try to determine how big a smoothing radius I want to have for this effect. And so I'm first going to drag this slider and set smoothing radius to zero, which appears as if skin smoothing is disabled. And then I'll carefully watch the image as I slowly drag the smoothing radius slider to the right to increase the value. Basically what I want is the smallest smoothing value that I can get away with, the smallest value that will do an adequate job of smoothing out the skin. That's going to give me the most natural and most realistic result. And you can see that the skin is pretty well smoothed out at a value a little over 0.1, which is less than half of the default smoothing radius value. The smoothing mode parameter refers to a blend mode used internally by the smoothing algorithm. Overlay tends to cover the original texture a little bit more, and soft light tends to reveal it a little bit more, although the difference can be subtle. In this case, I'm going to leave it set to overlay. Mix to Gaussian does what the parameter name indicates and will mix the image part way with a Gaussian blur that is using the smoothing radius value. It tends to create a more misty look, sometimes a more smooth or even plastic kind of artificial look when used at too high a value, depending on the image. In this case, I will leave it at a very low value. Now this shine reduction is a very useful feature and this image does have a fair amount of shine on the face, a fair amount of specular light in which you can see some of the skin texture which we are trying to minimize. So I will use the shine reduction here. When using shine reduction, I want to sample a color from the original image. So I'm going to set skin mix to zero temporarily to disable the effect while I sample the image. And if I click on this color chip and I grab the eyedropper, I will place it over the shiniest area, the sort of peak specular light area, and then I will move it slightly off that peak area to a somewhat darker area, and that is the color I will sample as my shine replace color. Now if I set the skin mix back to 100 so that I can see the effect, and I toggle shine reduction on and off, you can see the effect that it is having on the image. The shine reduction mix by default is set to 50%, and leaving it somewhere in the middle is usually a good idea for the most natural looking results. I think that looks pretty good. And if I toggle skin smoothing on and off or enable the compare wipe and wipe back and forth between the affected and unaffected area, you can see what the skin smoothing is now doing and how it does a better job of preserving the shadows and the original lighting of the face.